right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and pipeline of CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by David Immons, who is in Vermont. How are you doing, David? I'm well, John. Thanks for having me today. Of course, of course. And David is the president at Artist Market artist marketing formula and what we're going to talk about today is something interesting something we haven't discussed on on this show before and that is the one clear path to online success for artists and speciality small business owners um so david let's let's dive into this i mean i was looking before uh at uh, at some of your um some of your information and a lot of it talked about obviously art shows and all of this and you know how art shows hadn't changed and how you needed to think of things differently you're an artist obviously you went to a lot of art shows obviously art shows haven't been a thing recently either so the imperative to change was already there now it's there times 1000 right oh my gosh uh, it, it, it's amazing how you know with covid everything has changed all these in-person events uh, but, you know, the, the writing was on the wall for years that the Internet was mm -hmm. really taking uh, taking this this prominent place in marketing for especially for. Well, let me back up a little bit. Internet's always been there, always been powerful. Anyone mm -hmm. who thinks about the Internet understands that. Holy cow, I can reach the whole world. How amazing is that? There's got to be a way to tap into that power. Well, as a small brand, if you go back enough years, a small brand is always saying, you know, how do I tap in? And it's always seemed to be out of reach. How do I yeah. you know, play with the big guys? And it's not until social media came along that all of a sudden things changed. And small brands now have this amazing opportunity to explode their brand. And so that's really, you know, once, once that hit the scene, that's what opened my eyes as I made the shift from selling in person at, at events to selling online. And it's just yeah. the, the dynamic is amazing now. Yeah. And I guess, I mean, I guess one of the challenges and something that you obviously help your clients with, one of the challenges is that if you're an artist or a speciality business of any kind, uh, I mean, I would assume you're consumed in your art for a lot of, you know, and that's natural, right? You're consumed in your art. You didn't, when you became an artist, you didn't sign up to be a marketer necessarily or a salesperson necessarily. So these are not maybe skills that come naturally to a lot of people in, in who have businesses like yours. Exactly. And, and that's, you know, one of the keys to having success online is really, uh, there's a couple of them. Number one, don't ever put your marketing hat on. As an artist, as a small brand, what you want to be is authentically you. You just mm -hmm. want to take who you are and, and what you do and the passion for what you do and bring that online. And then the second part of the, the marketing equation is staying in a lane, staying as focused as you can because the internet will pull you in a million directions. Mm -hmm. And especially creative people are, the, the brain is not wired that way, like you've said. And, you know, you're going to get overwhelmed really fast. However, if you find a lane to stay in, you can have wild success by just bringing your authentic self to that lane. And that's what I teach. I teach my artists how to do. We use tools, we use strategies, but we stay in a lane and we never put a marketing hat on. We just come to the internet as who we are. Yeah, it's, it's very interesting because I, I agree with you. I think uh, it's very easy to get distracted and not just for, for artists or speciality businesses, but for any business, it's very easy to run after everything. I mean, you mentioned like social media marketing. It's very easy to be, oh, ooh, I, I, I gotta be on Facebook. Oh no, I gotta be on Instagram. No, I gotta be on TikTok. I gotta be here. And before you know it, you're everywhere. And when you're everywhere, you're kind of nowhere. Exactly. I mean, it's, it, it's, it's been that way with marketing forever. You really, you need to focus. And, and what's neat about what happened with my business is as I started to focus, I started to see the power. And as, at, once you start seeing the power, you realize, okay, this is where I want to be. You know, a, a perfect example is that if you're out in the real world doing the events and the shows like I used to do, or if you're selling at galleries, you would go back to shows that were just gangbusters. You know, these shows are amazing. I know I'm going to have a successful event. So you keep doing the things that work. And if you do that online, that excitement, <laughs> if you put blinders on and then allow that excitement to keep you in that lane, that's when you're going to win. 
So how do you how do you help your 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 students and your your clients? How do you help them choose the correct lane for them? What what should uh, give me some examples of what you should be looking for? Well, what I what I show them primarily is how to maximize the Facebook and Instagram platform. Okay, mm -hmm. so the, even though it's uh, two platforms owned by Facebook, it's the most powerful platform out there for finding your exact people. That, I mean, that's really what you're trying to do always with marketing is you're trying mm -hmm. to find your exact niche. And what I like to say is you need to put the right thing in front of the right people. And when you do that, everything else happens naturally. So you have to find out how do I get the target? So I teach my students how to target in a very specific way so that you're layering your targeting. You're not wasting your ammo anywhere. You're very narrowed down. It'll give you another real life example. When I would go to events, even really successful events, I would sell about one to 2% of the crowd. So that meant 98% of the people at an event mm -hmm. were not my customers. Well, online, I market to the 2%. So I'm not marketing wide, I'm marketing narrow. So you market narrow. And then the, the very next thing is, what do you put in front of people? And that's a question that you have to ask yourself. And, and, and I have worksheets and I have videos that I, I walk people through because it's different for everyone. For some people, it might be an image. For other people, it might be an organic Facebook Live video. Uh, it might be a slideshow. It might be a behind the scenes video. It all depends on who you are and what you're doing. If you're a restaurant owner, it might be you walking through your restaurant every afternoon before you open for dinner with your phone on and you're doing a Facebook Live and you're talking about what the specials are tonight and, and, and what the chef is cooking in the kitchen right now. And you, you go through the door and you show the kitchen. I mean, that's a winning recipe, <laughs> pardon yeah. the pun, a winning recipe for a restaurant owner. So that's putting the right thing. So what that restaurant owner would have to do next is target the right audience. So who are my people? How do I layer that targeting? So I put this video in front of the right people and everything else happens naturally after that. Yeah. So obviously the, the, the critical uh, key part there is that you really do understand who your audience is and who the, who the correct people are, because it's very easy to go too broad, right? I mean, you, I'm sure you've heard it before when you've been talking to people or you've been asking them, like, who's your target audience? And they say, well, I, I kind of sell to everybody. Right, exactly. You know, right. Or, you know, people who like flowers or people, you know, it's yeah. like, all of a sudden, it's such a broad, broad audience. What's, what's neat about the platform, though, is once you start targeting, if you, if you set the right campaign objectives with your advertising, you actually have the advantage of the algorithm and the AI working for you. So I, I, I'm always teaching strategy with, with my uh, marketing. And, and what I mean by that is you can put a certain video, let's say, out in front of a certain audience. And if you're strategic about it, you ask the right questions in the video or the copy on your ad is is such that it, it, it uh, elicits response from the people viewing, then all those touch points, as people start engaging with your ad, the algorithm is paying attention to that. And so the algorithm starts to find more people like those people. So it's kind of a combination of understanding how to target, understanding who your customers are, narrow down nice and tight, but then be strategic with your creative part of your ad so that you get the algorithm involved and that's going to really help your delivery. Yeah, no, no, that's 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 fascinating, and and obviously, you know, the foundational work is is critical to all of that. One other point that you raised earlier, I think that's just worth coming back to, and it's that idea of not not putting on your marketing hat or whatever, but being your authentic self. Because I mean, particularly when it comes to speciality businesses, you know, when you, when you buy from an artist like yourself you kind of want to know who the artist is, what they're, you know, what inspires them, why they paint in the way that they do. As you mentioned, the restaurant owner, you kind of want to know who, who owns this restaurant, what, what drove them. So that authenticity piece is really, really incredibly important, but it does require people to kind of put themselves out there a bit. It does. And, and it, it really requires you to kind of take a step back because most of us who have been doing whatever we do for so long, we, we kind of lose sight of the uniqueness of it or the, 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 the special components that people love. You know, you might live in the, in the mountains of Vermont and you've just been there your whole life and you never really think about how special that is to, mm -hmm. to someone who spends their life in a city. Uh, you know, quite often when I make a video, I'll talk about the fact that I'm creating what I create in my Vermont shop. 
And just those two words or those three words, my Vermont shop conjures up an image for your fans. And, yeah. and that kind of pulls them into your story. The, the thing that I always advise my students to do is to read the reviews from their customers. Read your customer reviews, read the testimonials, the things people say about you. And that will help you understand what you should be saying in ad copy or video copy. You know, that's the best place to find sales copy is to read the reviews for, for your restaurant, for your brand, uh, because your, your customers really, they hit the key points. They hit the things that resonate and they're gonna resonate with people who don't know anything about you yet. Yeah, that's a that's a fantastic point uh, for people to take away. Yeah, I mean, your your Facebook reviews, uh, you know, your Yelp reviews or whatever. I mean, it is that's a fantastic place to 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 get some key themes that you can that you exactly. can touch upon. Uh, yeah. And I, and I love that idea of, of, of people like presenting more and behind the scenes and understanding, because I think one of the things, David, maybe you'll uh, agree with me here is even prior to the pandemic, I think there was uh, a move towards people wanting more human connection because they felt like, you know, technology is a great enabler and it's doing great things for your business and for the people that you help. Um, but maybe it had started to become something that people hide behind or feel disc. I always say, used to say, you know, we're the, we're the, we're the most connected, disconnected people um, <laughs> ever, right? You know, we have, but we're totally disconnected, even though we're connected with the whole world. Um, and now, obviously, with the pandemic, it's even more so. So, the, so that part about really inviting people in, kind of behind the curtain, is even more important than ever. It really is. And, and, and you can tell that, you know, if you look at some of the things, some of the catchphrases that have been around for the last decade, you know, the shop local, the, um, you know, mm -hmm. buy local, support small business, those type going to the farmer's markets, those type of things have been around for a reason. And it, it is that connection. It's that human connection with, with other humans. You know, if you think about what is a small brand, a small brand really is the fact that the owner is kind of the, the front face of the company. And so you're connecting with the owner. So buying from a small brand, even though we use that terminology, it's really, if you, if you dug down deep inside and say, you know, why do I feel good about that? It really is more of a human connection than anything. And, and I think it's just innate in, in people that to want that to happen. And so, you know, again, and actually the, the other side of it, if you want to look at a marketing side, look at what the big brands have been doing over the last decade is they have been trying to be authentic. They've been trying to be organic. They're try, they try and dumb down their marketing, as they would say, and, uh, and make it look more real and, and more relatable. Uh, and so they're trying to do what would naturally come out of us. And that's why I always tell my students, like, the, the internet is rigged in your favor. The algorithms are rigged in your favor. What the algorithms look for on Facebook and Instagram is they look for normal interaction. So what is normal? Normal is someone says, I like that. And you reply and say, thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then it goes back and forth. That normal interaction uh, and, and the algorithm's wired to look for that. You know, three words typed or one word typed is different than seven words typed. And so the kind of interaction that happens on a small brand's Facebook page is far different than what happens on, you know, Nike's Facebook page. Mm -hmm. and, and the algorithm knows that and your page will go further and wider because of it. Yeah, but I mean, because uh, like you said, I mean, you have the advantage of uh, you can be authentic because you're just being who you are. Uh, these big corporations, they obviously have to invest a lot of time and creativity into trying to come across as authentic and generally failing miserably. But that's, exactly. another, that's another conversation. <laughs> so you have a real advantage here when it comes to, as you said, this is what the big brands are trying to do you have it there right in front of you so when you when you work with your with your uh, with your clients and your students um, I guess probably one of the things that you often come up a great uh, up against is okay so I'm an artist and I like to spend my day painting I don't really want to spend my time on Instagram or on Facebook and stuff so how do you help them to integrate that part into the into their daily work practice and they understand that this is important and they have to set aside time for it and invest time and effort in it well, the big components are, you know, keeping it simple, keeping it step by step and showing them the things that will move the needle. So it's not that you have to do a lot, but there are some things you should do. And then with everything you do, be strategic about it so that it can have a longer life. 
And so an example for that would be, let's say I talk to an artist about making a video in their shop when, okay, you go to the shop, you're going to be in there painting today, set the phone up, turn it on, maybe do a time lapse, maybe just let it run and, mm -hmm. and, and use that video later, post it on your page. Now, be strategic when you do that. Make sure you say a couple of things that are important so that you get engagement. Also make sure you talk about the fact that you have a website and what is a website address. So if you post this video at some point on your page and it becomes a really active video, well, you can turn it into an ad. And so you were strategic when you started. If you turn it into an ad, it might be an ad that runs for three years. And so be smart with the use of your time. Understand that you don't have to do a lot, but you do have to do the things that move the needle. And so if you get some ads working for you, which is really easy to do when you, you stop and you, you pay attention to what you put out there in front of people, you'll find, and you, you go in the back end of Facebook, you look at your metrics, you realize, okay, this is a profit producing ad. I want this to run for a long time. Well, now that's doing all the work for you. You're not, you're, you're putting some money behind it, maybe a dollar a day, maybe $2 a day. And that ad is out there on the internet, driving sales all day long, 24 seven, and you're in your studio painting. <laughs> so you don't have to do a lot, but you have to be smart. Yeah, and I suppose in many ways, it's like, I mean, when you're painting and you produce a, an original piece of art, sometimes you decide to, you know, produce 100 prints of that, right? So exactly. I mean, it's the same, it's almost the same concept. So it's, it's, it's a paradigm that a lot of these people would understand anyway. Exactly. And it, and it really is the biggest hurdle for folks, for small brands coming to the internet is they look at the internet, just like you would look at a mountain range. If you're driving down a highway and you're heading towards the Rocky Mountain, you're like, oh my God, I've got to go over those mountains. And you're not going over those mountains. You're going to be on a highway on one lane. You're going to be going through a pass that was already pre-designed. It works. It, you'll get to the other side. It's not the mountain range. And same thing with the internet. I think small brands look at the internet and they're like, wow, where do I start? What do I do? And the overwhelm really keeps them shut down. And so one of the biggest things I do with my course and coaching is, is I let people know that there is a winning path. It's not that complicated. There are a few things to do. It's about being smart. And then the, the cool bonus is you end up with a lot of business. You grow a fan base. That's really kind of a, a, a kind of a mm -hmm. neat thing that a lot of people don't really pay attention to. You know, you've, you've got the sales coming in, but you also have this fan base that's growing. And these are people, it's, you know, use a restaurant analogy. As you grow a restaurant, you want repeat customers. And as those repeat customers grow, well, all of a sudden you have, you have a lot of regulars that come to your restaurant. Well, what's a regular? A regular is a fan. It's a person that hooked up with you once, fell in love with what you do, and they want to stay in your world. And so they keep coming back. And so when you recognize that that fan base is going to grow, the inner, I mean, the, the AI and the algorithms growing a fan base online is on steroids. The exponential nature of growth is just insane. So you have all that going on, kind of a parallel track. You have sales coming in, fan base growing. And that's what I call, when, I, when I'm training people, what I'm telling them, I'm doing for them is teaching them how to have a sustainable, successful online business. So it's about mm -hmm. being sustainable. And, and it's amazing what you just said there about fans. Uh, actually, the, the, the marketer, David Meerman Scott, his latest book is called Fanocracy. And, and that's exactly uh, what it's about. And it's interesting when you think about it is that, um, you know, large brands spend so much money on trying to create fan, turning customers into fans. And it's a really wow. difficult thing for a big brand to do. Yeah. For a small, for a, a, an artist or a restaurant and stuff, it's actually a lot easier. And if you, again, it's back to what you said earlier about the big brands trying to come across as authentic. They're also trying to turn customers into fans, but you know something, it's a heck of a lot easier for you to do it. And so therefore you, you're actually ahead of the game. Exactly. I mean, it, it really, it, it, just, it comes out of you naturally. So you've got that going for you. Mm -hmm. your, your interaction on these platforms is going to be rewarded simply because the algorithms are wired that way. So you've got that going for you. <laughs> the customers, they're so sick of the phony big brands trying to be real. They're looking for you. You know, they're looking, but they're shop local. They're looking for the farmer's market. They're looking for the small brand. So they're seeking you. I mean, all of these things converge to make it just an absolute perfect environment for small brands to thrive. 
Yeah, listen, a fantastic. Uh, thank you so much, David. Uh, all of David's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, David, please tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Excellent. Well, it's uh, artistmarketingformula.com is the website. I teach a free masterclass, though, every week, okay? To get involved in the free masterclass, you can register at Artist Marketing Blueprint. So artistmarketingblueprint.com, that'll get you to the free masterclass where I go deeper on these topics and explain to you more of the, the strategy behind what, what I'm doing. Yeah, listen, fantastic. And I would uh, encourage people to check it out. Uh, the world has, has changed. I don't know when, you know, when those shows and whatever are coming back. But what David has outlined here is that you can build a fantastic business for yourself. So maybe in the future, going to shows is just a nice thing you like to do as opposed to the, the thing that you have to do. Absolutely. Thank you so much, John. All right. Thank you. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. See you all for another interview really soon. Thank you.